Hey guys, so I am Callie DeBoer with EdTech, and I am here to demo for you the Mimeo panel so that you kind of have an understanding of basic functionality. From there, we'll be asking for your feedback so that I can get into some more specific videos since I'm not able to come out there and do a training for you guys. With that, I am gonna do this video about what we can do here with the actual internal apps to the panel. I don't have my computer attached in any way for Bluetooth or anything. This is stuff I can do with just the panel as long as it's connected to Wi-Fi. okay? So we're gonna just walk through all of the menus here. I'm gonna start with settings. It's exactly what you think it is. Uh, your Wi-Fi, Ethernet, Bluetooth. Often what you're coming here for is your sound if you need it. Um, if something's going on and you can't figure it quite out, what's going on with the volume, the sound menu is probably where you're gonna go. In addition, you can view any apps that you have downloaded. It does have basic apps available because it's an Android device, but as you can see here, I don't have any installed. For the most part, I use my computer to cast my Mimeo, so I don't need a ton of functionality there. So I'm gonna close. And at any time, depending on which device you have, you'll see this is possibly a different model than what you have specifically, but the interaction of the menu should be the same. So I have a couple options for how I access. I can go to this bottom left-hand side and hit the little home. Or at any time, I can click on the arrow at the side. I have them on both sides. And I can click on it and hit the green home button, and it will bring me back to the home screen. So that was settings. If I want to turn this into a virtual whiteboard, which many of us do, I can do that here. So I have my whiteboard, my options at the bottom, okay? I can also add additional screens with the plus button here. And so I can do another screen, but then at the end I can save them all as kind of a deck per se. So I do have that option. With the deck, I can write, Freehand. I can also add shapes, which is super nifty for our math teachers. If I double click there, I can add cubes and I can add cylinders, all that good stuff, changing colors, all of that. Okay. So I can do that. I can also zoom it in, zoom it out to make it take up less of the screen if I've kind of decided I've overextended myself on what will fit on one screen, but I need to get more on this screen, I can zoom that out and call it good, okay? At any time, I can also move the entire thing at once with my pen. If I need to erase something, I have a few options. So I can hit the eraser and You'll see that instead of erasing it, it kind of highlights the shape and you can see some dotted lines there. Um, once I select that, it will erase. So I can, if I need to get rid of something but not the whole thing, it's kind of nifty that I can do it that way. I can also get rid of, say, anything that is connected is gonna erase. So if I have the hello, um, it will erase, but I can also undo that. And I have another option and it's the side of your hand. So if you take the side of your hand, you'll see the eraser shape pop up and it will just erase exactly what your hand goes over. It's still not the most precise method, but you can erase portions of things that are connected. I think that's a huge find for some people. Um, if I hit the sweep, the broom down here, it will erase everything. So that is clean slate, let's start over. I don't need that in the future. If I did need a blank slate, but I needed this again in the future, I could also hit the plus button over here. And you'll see it says two of two over here. So I can also go back to my original one, hit that button, and it's still there for me to reference in the future. Okay, that is the very general beginnings of the Note app. Okay, again, I also have some settings, which is cool. I can also change my background, which for some of us is gonna be huge. So image, I can do graph paper on the Note app, which 
for math teachers. I hope you're cheering in the background there. Um, I can add a basketball court or a soccer field or what have you, track clefs, clefs, sorry, um, graph paper, and it will underlay and I can then use it as a coordinate plane. Okay, if I ever want to get rid of that, I just click that. I can also change the color of my screen. Okay. And again, I access to that here on the three dots and background. Okay. So that is the very quick version of what Note does. Okay. So I'm going to, I can hit the X and it will ask if I want to save my notes. So maybe I did some really good notes here or some students are gonna need this that weren't in class today. I can do that. It's gonna take a picture of the note. It is not gonna be a recording of you doing the note. It's gonna be a picture. It will ask you where you want to save it or what you want to name it. Um, it is calling this September 10th of, I'm not sure what the last four numbers are, but um, September 10th is the date today. So that makes sense. And, I get an on-screen keyboard that I have to work with, okay? Okay, back to this screen. So that was Note. Finder is simply where your files are gonna end up when you take those screenshots, when you do those sorts of things, um, they're gonna end up here. You can also install fonts and different things if you wanna make your Vimeo a little bit more personalized. But for the most part, this is going to be where you hunt for screenshots that you took, okay? We will exit out of that. Again, I just hit the little door with an arrow. And then we have input. If you have something plugged in, again, your panel might look different than mine. A panel that has it on the front here, you can plug into that. Or there are likely some in the back of your panel. Right here, and you can plug into that for a DVD player, what have you. I almost said laser disc player. I don't know. Um, but if you click input, I don't have anything plugged in right now, so I can't demo it. But all it is is an input dialog box. So if I know that my VCR, my DVD player, is plugged in to HDMI 1, I can click on that and go. Okay. Next, we're going to go to Chrome, which is a Chrome browser, as long as you're connected to the internet, and it will take you to, um, this one took me to the last page I was on when I closed it. So I was on Defco Public Schools. I can surf the web here. I will say it's not particularly um, quick to type on the screen because you have to, I will show you, type with the on-screen keyboard. So if I want to do that, I would say if you're going to be doing this very often, I would have some, I would take the time to create some bookmarks of where you're going to go most often, maybe your slides, maybe your drive on Google so that you can easily navigate to those. Okay. Um, it is loading google.com. Again, if I was using it, I would most likely cast my computer to the screen, which I will go over in another video. Might just be Google, but let's try that. It does do a decent job of predicting what you're trying to get to, so sometimes you can get around it that way. So it does take me to drive.google.com. Again, I'm using that on-screen keyboard to navigate that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead on this screen. You'll see I don't have the option to use the exit button because I'm inside a browser. I can go to the side, grab these tools, and I can get. So that is crap. Document camera is a lot like input. You will have it plugged into a USB drive, and it will prompt you from there. I don't have one to demo for that. Sorry. Um, keeper is about your memory on the panel itself. Your panel has internal memory, obviously, as you saw from the finder. So you will need to use this to keep it so that it's not bogged down with memory all the time. So uh, you can click the memory, which is some of that browsing history, the cache of cookies and some of that. Or you can, if you put stuff in the trash from the finder, you can clean that here. That's pretty much what the screen is for. Okay, I'm gonna exit. Not much 
much to say that. Um, you do have these side things that I've been using to go home each time, but let's go over what those do. Like. So our home button, our go back button, and then we have this button, which is kind of, if you have ever worked with a Mac, it kind of brings all your windows out to see what's going on. And Windows does that as well, I suppose. But it shows you all the things you've had open or most recently used to get back there quickly. So it just kind of pulls those windows apart so they're not sitting in front of each other so that you can get back there quickly. Um, if you get the practice of using it, it really does speed up your time with Vimeo. You're not going back to the home screen and then back. This is a quick way to get to Note. Still got that weird green color on it, but um, quick way to get to Note from any screen. Okay, um, it turns off your annotation there because you have the tools underneath. Just so you know, when you click on note, you're not gonna have that annotation tool at your disposal, but that's because you have so many more. Okay, um, this is to get connected to the Unplugged app. You're usually gonna be launching that from your computer, so I'm not gonna go into this extensively, okay? Um, it's telling me how to connect what my room ID is, which is helpful if yours wasn't set up with a custom ID, um, and where to set it up, which Wi-Fi you're on so that you can double check on your own computer that that's where you're at, and a QR code to install it if you need to. We are seeing some schools are having an issue with getting it installed without admin approval. We're working on that. So if you don't have Unplugged installed on your computer right now, contact um, IT and they will get an admin to remote in and get it installed for you. But we're hoping that soon you'll just be able to go to Software Center, get it downloaded, and call it good. Okay, I'm gonna go and I can zoom. So it was a little magnifying glass. I can zoom in or out. I'm already all the way out on this one, so I can zoom in. If it goes for the center of the screen, I can move to that with my pen or my finger. And then I just have some general settings, um, some small apps that are kind of nifty to have. We have the spotlight. So I can move this around to show a really specific part of the screen that I want the students to look at. I can make it bigger or smaller with my fingers or a pen. So I can change the settings. I can make it the default size bigger or smaller. And I can change, they call it the alpha, but it's the contrast, how dark the background is going to get. If I want it completely black, I can do that. I can close that. We've also got a countdown. I can change. Hit start. It's a really quick way to get a countdown timer on your screen for kiddos to see. I can also reset it at any time. I can set it to it so it rings or doesn't ring. Sometimes the ring gets annoying, but um, I do have that option. There is an X right here to close that. It's kind of floating on top of whatever screen I'm on. Okay. And finally, just a stopwatch. Let's see how long it takes you to get moved to your other seat or what have you. Um, I can lap it and it'll show up at the bottom or you can just pause it. Set it. Okay, so that is the very basic functionality of what your Mimeo can do or your box site with no computer attached at all. This is just within the board. Okay, so in the next video, I'll talk about casting to the screen what your options are um, and that sort of thing. So thanks, guys.